name is Noel Heismans, and I'm here with Team Pink and Edie for you. Today I'm going to be touching on our introduction as well as our mission statement. My name is Alicia. I'm going to be talking about DUIs in Alaska and also the demographics of Fairbanks and why we feel like it's a viable business for Fairbanks. Hello everyone, I'm James Hannes, and I'll be going over the pricing as well as our costs, our SWOT analysis, which is our strengths, weaknesses, options. I'm Tyler Morley, and I'm going to talk about other markets that are using our product, and also navigate you through our website. All right, so when you go out for a night, a night on the town in Fairbanks, or when I do, I see two problems. Number one, how am I going to get home? And number two, if I drive, or my vehicle's out there, how is that going to get home at the end of the night? You have five current solutions that I came up with. Number one, you can have friends or family DV for you, but that may not be, they may, they may not enjoy that because it keeps them up late and having to deal with a bunch of drunk people. Uh, you could drive there and cab back, but you have the issue of your vehicle still being at the bar the next day. You could cab down <coughs> trip, but cabs in Fairbanks are fairly expensive. You could walk, but in the winter when it gets to minus 40, I wouldn't want to be walking home from the bar. And you could risk it and drink and drive and hope that you don't get caught. But as Alicia's going to point out, that may not be your best option. So. In Fairbanks, we have five different law enforcement agencies that can arrest you for drinking and driving. Just in the Fairbanks area alone, there's the Alaska State Troopers, Fairbanks, North Pole University, and Airport Police that are all out full time trying to catch drunk drivers. So in 2012, those five agencies just in the Fairbanks area arrested 530 people for DUIs, and a very large percentage of those were male. Uh, DUI consequences in Alaska suck. You get three days in jail. There are, your license is revoked for three months. Uh, you have to put an admission interlock in your car for 12 months. So once you do get your car back, in order to drive, you have to blow into something and it will stop you randomly and make you blow into it again while you're in the middle of driving. Uh, you have to get SR22 insurance for five years. And the average cost of your first DUI is $24,265 in Alaska. That's for driving over the influence, which is a .08, which is one beer in one hour. Or if you have your commercial driver's license, it's only a .04, which is half of that. And so now Nolan is going to tell you about a cheaper, safer, and less embarrassing alternative to DUIs. So our solution, DD for you, and that is the logo that Alicia created for us. So what is DD for you? DD for you is a designated driving service that is designed to get you and your car home safe at the end of the night. How it would work is we would come in teams of two in a pilot car. You would call us at your location. We'd come. One of our team members would get out, grab your keys, hop in your vehicle with you, drive you home with our pilot car following behind. Once we arrive at the destination, you pay us, and we leave. Simple, easy, and effective. Um, what we thought for hours of operation is Friday and Saturday nights from about 10 p.m. to 4 because we feel like that'd be peak times. Um, with, we'd also go by appointment and we'd be operational on all holidays because we feel that a lot of people like to go out and drink on holidays, so we feel like that'd be good. The one thing is, is it doesn't just have to be a bar, it can be anywhere if you're at a house, you, it's any time that you don't feel like you are okay to drive, you give us a call and we'll come to any location. So to better, better illustrate how I, uh, my explanation, we have created a short commercial, which is, um,
now. <laughs> All right, so our mission statement is speed for you is committed to providing excellent customer service to get customers in their cars home safely anytime they find themselves unable to drive. So now James is going to take over with pricing. All right, so as you can see here, this is our price breakdown. We'll be charging a flat rate of $10 pickup fee. And with that, we'll have an additional $1 per extra occupant. So if it's you and another person, the $11 right off the bat. After that, we'll be charging what most caps would charge is a through a mile breakdown or quarter mile breakdown. And we'll also be charging for additional stops. I don't think this is offered elsewhere right now. Which would be $1 per minute for waiting an additional stop, and oh, also, originally we planned for a membership fee, and scrapped that because of overwhelming negativity on our survey results. So for example, here we got two people going a 10 mile trip, which is pretty standard since we have a large city. Uh, you figure a 20 minute fast food stop at Taco Bell, there's a <laughs> so, you got about $51 for just that one trip. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Tyler to show an example of current markets. So, I was looking at other markets in our research to see how kind of they operate as their product. First one I looked at was called Steer Clear, based out of New Jersey. They pay their employees $8 per hour while they're waiting to get a phone call. While they're in services, they get their wage bumped up to $12 an hour. Um, they have a membership fee, it is called Uber. What it is, you keep your credit card on file, and they charge $20 for pickup, plus $2.50 per mile that you drive. You can also, regular users can put a down payment of $5 per month, and that'll give you a discount of $15 for pickup, and that would cost uh, $2.25 per month. Like I said before, both memberships to your credit card on file, so you don't have to worry about making payments, trying to get out of your cab or the car service and you'll receive a bill in the mail. Um, in New Jersey, it said it worked out to be 5% more or less than regular clouds, but it's definitely cheaper than black car service, which would be your rooms. The second market I looked at was called a safe alternative, ASA, and they're based out of Vancouver. Ironically, I am from Vancouver and I've never heard of this service, so it was kind of weird reading about this, researching about it, and knowing that it wasn't even out there. But, they charge 10 15% more than a one way cab in Vancouver. Uh, starting wage to enter a cab is $3.50 plus an additional dollar for everyone who enters a cab. Uh, this company would take roughly 30 to 45 minutes to pick you up, and they charge $1 per minute plus extra charges from the first five minutes. And in Vancouver, trying to get around, you can sit at a traffic bike for up to five minutes, so getting charged per minute would be pretty painful to watch. And now I'm going to turn it over to Alicia, who's going to talk about our survey results. So we surveyed 50 different people at different bars in the Fairbanks area. Um, 31 of the people that we surveyed were male, 19 were female. Um, from the survey results, we were able to determine that this was a viable business in the Fairbanks area. At 80% of the people we surveyed go out at least once a week um, to drink. And of those who drank every single time they went out, there was only one person who was not interested in our service. Everyone said it was very important to have a safe ride home. And almost all of the people who we surveyed had cars and carpooled to the bars. It would be important that they and their car and their friends got home safely. We had more males than females say that they would drink more if they um, could get their cars and themselves home safely. And so from our survey, we were able to determine that our target market to, for advertisement would be males ages 21 through 40. Um, mainly males because this is a mainly male town. Uh, we have a higher male population. There's the military, which has higher policies against DUIs for um, their jobs and other careers. And then there's also just a much higher DUI rate for males. And there were more males available at the bars for surveys. So, so that's where we figure our most best advertisement is going to be. So, 
So that's why we feel it will be a viable service, and now James is going to talk about how it's going to be financially viable. Yeah, so our costs, <coughs> now the hugest thing for our business is the vehicle costs. As you can see, we got 20,000 uh, 20, as a top end value for what I would consider a fleet vehicle. Uh, obviously five teams at $20,000 is going to be uh, pricey right after that. Now with that, uh, the second largest cost to determine is insurancing and maintenance costs. So if we got new vehicles, it may not be as costly as getting a bunch of used vehicles. Um, however, insurance, that will also go with that. So if we get like a 1960s car, that might not even have to worry about it. Now, additional fuel and incidentals, that's a pretty regular cost, uh, as well as employment. So our employees would make about $8 an hour and hopefully some tips. And with that, I'd like to go into our SWOT analysis. So for our strengths, I'd like to highlight the fact that we'd be a first mover in this. There is no other service available that is like this. The only other thing that you can do is take a cab and basically walk back or get your car in shape. Uh, we would be offering competitive rates and also offering during peak hours and operating days, such as Friday and Saturday. Some of our weaknesses, however, well, it's a new business. It's very risky to just start up in the market as a first mover. Along with that, there may be some hesitation with going from cabs to our service and going through the traditional route. So on to our opportunities. Again, we'll be uh, going into this location brand new. Uh, again, there's nothing like this in existence full time. And the key thing for opportunities is that it would be a, already encouraging enough that there's an opportunity for you and your vehicle to get home at negative 40 and not have to worry about your car. With our threats, if people stop drinking, that's a huge detriment. <laughs> Just saying. Also, reduction in DUI rates. Uh, obviously, if there's no threat of DUI, we have no business. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Tyler to discuss our webpage.
10 to 15 minutes you can leave an area. So it's going to be up to date Twitter status, especially Friday, Saturdays. Also promotions that we can give throughout the weeks to announce our product. So this is DD for you. If